All right, this is GCA4, and it's all about the properties of the isometric transformations. I want to kind of slow down here and hit it a little bit harder because these guys are really important to understand how they work. The first one is the reflection. How does a reflection work? How is it defined? When we do what, what is actually going on behind the scenes. A reflection is takes all points um, across the line of reflection in a perpendicular congruent distance. So what that means is if point A is being reflected here, it will go to the opposite side in a perpendicular distance. A would map to A prime and in doing so would create uh, an equal distance to the line and from the line to the new point and it must be perpendicular. So a point out here, B, would map to B prime out here equidistant. Now notice something that's happening is everybody would move perpendicularly, uh, they'd all move in a parallel direction. For instance, if this point C was on this side, it would go this direction, again, perpendicular, but equal in distance. Do you see how all points are moving in a parallel manner? That's something that maybe isn't fully understood unless you look at the definition. Another important thing is that if you are on the line of reflection, you stay right there. So let me just read that to you. If you're a point P not on the line, then when you reflect yourself across, this becomes the perpendicular bisector. If you're on the line, you stay exactly where you are. Now let's look at some of the characteristics of this particular thing. First of all, there must always be a perpendicular bisector between the original, the pre-image, and its image. That's an important thing. Another important thing is all points will move parallel uh, to, uh, sorry, parallel to each other and perpendicular to the line of reflection. Here's some other things that happen. Distances moved, so A to A prime, B to B prime, C to C prime, D to D prime. These distances are all different. Now the pieces are the same, but the total distance moved differs. A to A prime is a different distance than B to B prime, C to C prime, D to D prime. Because the further the way you are to the line of reflection, the farther the distance you'll travel. If you're in tight, you'll travel a small distance. And so distances are different with a reflection. Important characteristic. The second characteristic that is important about this is that we have orientation. Now orientation is the ordering of points. So let's, let's pretend here. Well, let's do a new one. Let's start with a triangle. Here we are. A, B, C. And let's reflect that triangle across. C prime here, B prime here, A prime here. Now, orientation is not the way it looks. Sometimes we think that the orientation of this letter and the orientation of this letter are different. Probably in the general English language, that's true. Uh, we have uh, portrait and landscape are different orientations. In geometry, though, um, orientation refers to the order of the points. 
So here, going clockwise, in a clockwise manner, it goes triangle A, B, C. Here, going in a clockwise manner, starting at A, it would go to C and then to B. Notice that even though we went in the same order clockwise in both cases, the order differs. So the orientation of the shape is also different. Now you already knew that because when you look in a mirror it's reversed. That's like when you look at this, this is the back of my hand and when we reflect it, it's the palm of my hand. The reflection is the only one that lifts the object out of the plane to perform it. And so we get a different orientation. So different distances, different orientation. And the last thing I want to talk about is special points. Are there anything special about locations in the plane when we reflect? And there is. If you are on the line of reflection, D maps to D prime, if you're on the line. So it is possible to map to yourself. So that gives us a pretty good feeling for the guts of what's going on in behind the scenes of a reflection. We got perpendicular bisectors, we have parallel motion, and they're all perpendicular to the same line of reflection. Just wanted to also demonstrate a few things here in the geometry sketch pad. So here's our triangle ABC, and uh, if we're going to reflect this, uh, we're going to reflect it over our line M. Uh, you see the proper notation here. This would be C prime, and of course this is B prime. Here's where you can see again that orientation reversing ABC, A prime, C prime, B prime in the uh, in our image. So the nice thing about this is you can kind of get, um, you know, you can see different kinds of environments here for reflections. Understand that you see how C is on this side now, and so it moved over here to C prime, B went to B prime, A went to A prime, and so on. Reflection isn't a one-way relationship. All points get reflected using the line of reflection. And so you get these kinds of environments. Um, Again, nice thing here is we could test out a few things about our uh, definition. If uh, I connect C to C prime, B to B prime, guess what? Those lines are all going to be parallel to each other. They're all going to be perpendicular here in our uh, intersection because we know that those, that's the perpendicular bisector. See how that's got to be perpendicular each time. Uh, all three intersections there would be perpendiculars. And of course these are equidistant. Uh, this would be the same as this. This distance would be the same as this distance. Oops. And this distance would be the same as this. So again, if we're closer to the line, then we go a shorter distance. If we're further away, we go a longer distance. So these are nice relationships to keep in your mind as you work with reflections.